Hey guys, welcome back to the world of English exams. So many of you have requested us to make this video on how to answer matching question type in the reading test. So here I am with the video in which I am going to briefly summarize the strategy that will help you to answer all the different types of matching questions that you see in the reading test. So whether you are going to write the academic test or the general training test, I am sure that this video will be immensely useful to all of you. So do stay tuned till the end of the video to understand how many types of matching questions are there in the reading test and what is the process to be followed to answer each of them properly. And remember that any approach has to be practiced very well before you uh, actually follow it in the real test scenario. So make sure that you are taking up as many reading tests as possible in order to perfect yourself with these strategies. So I will get started with the video by giving you some basic and general information related to the reading test. So it, this would be like a quick recap of, of the basics and then we shall move on to the topic. So basically 60 minutes of time or one hour of time is given to complete the whole of the reading test. Unlike the listening test where 10 minutes of additional time is given to transfer the answers uh, to the answer sheet, here you don't get any such extra time. So you need to manage your time in such a way that you are not only answering those questions but also transferring them parallelly or simultaneously as you read. So don't waste any time to write the answers first in the question paper and later trying to transfer them to the answer sheet. That way it will consume a lot of uh, time and energy of course uh, so uh, make sure that you are practicing this very very well so one good thing about the IELTS test is that there is no negative marking in any of the sections of the test so even if you get an answer wrong so you are not going to lose marks for it so uh, you can retain whatever score you get so you can take a guess in case you are not confident of the answer but I wouldn't suggest that uh, I would suggest you to be perfect and aware of the different question types and practice them accordingly before taking the test. So one mark will be given for each correct answer that you write and since there is no negative marking, how many of our answers you mark correctly or write correctly will give you that level of band. So the only factors which are considered are spelling and the word limit which means that uh, for certain question types like fill in the blanks there would be an uh, a specified limit in which you have to write the answers like no more than two words let's say so you have to write all the answers within that limit that is you can write uh, the answer as a single word or a maximum of two words you should not exceed that limit so and of course uh, since the ILTS test is an English language ability assessment test uh, spelling uh, is considered to be very very important so you just make sure that you are writing the correct spelling. In case you are not confident of the spelling, you can directly copy it from the passage as well. And of course, you need to read the instructions to know the word limit and any other instructions which are mentioned there. So this is something about the um, test format. So now quickly moving on to the question types. So there are basically six types of questions in the reading test. Internally, there are many divisions. So let me uh, brief you about them. The first category or first question type is fill in the blanks wherein you will see some uh, gaps or blank spaces which you have to fill by reading the passage carefully. So under fill in the blanks there are different uh, question types like note completion, sentence completion, summary completion, flow chart completion, diagram labeling so and such others. Uh, so you, you need to, all you need to do is read the instructions, look at the word limit, I mean number of words in which the answer has to be written and simply follow the order of what is given in the passage and definitely that will lead to the right answer. But remember that for some uh, summary completion and diagram labeling question types, the answers may not always follow a sequence. Just bear this factor in mind and uh, I have already made videos related to each of these question types which can be found on our YouTube channel World of English Exams. So please do look into those videos, watch them till the end to understand the strategy along with a solved example to show you how to follow the approach, how to follow the strategy. So then coming to matching question types about which we are going to discuss uh, soon. So the next one is multiple choice questions which are of two different types. The first one is where you have to pick one correct option from three or four choices given 
and the second category of multiple choice is where you have to choose two correct options when you see five alternatives given then there are short answer questions the name itself suggests that you need to read the question and answer it shortly um, in, in a, a way that it correlates to the question uh, and it, it is relevant as well then there is true false not given you have to read several statements and confirm if they are true or false or not given based on what is given in the passage then there is yes no not given which is quite similar to true false so the individual question types have been explained in detail uh, but now we our focus is on matching question types so let's get started with looking at how many types of matching questions are there so the first type of matching questions is matching nouns with the information which means that you will see a list of nouns given uh, which you have to match it to the statement that is given there by reading the passage so sometimes a, a single noun can match to multiple statements that condition is called nb so when you see in the instructions that there is a, uh, a an instruction called nb then you need to know that a single option can match for multiple questions that is what is the meaning of nb which is very common in matching questions then we have matching sentence endings so uh, a sentence will be fragmented and you have to rejoin both the fragments by reading the passage that's it then we have uh, matching the list of headings you will see that uh, there are several titles given which you have to match it to the paragraph by reading it remember that one paragraph will have one suitable title you can't match multiple titles to the same paragraph or match the same title to multiple paragraphs so one paragraph will have one title that is what you, are, you need to remember then finally we have matching uh, the paragraph or identifying the paragraph in which the information is located so this is commonly known as para matching uh, a very very important question type in the test so this is some basic information about matching question types now we are going to look at each of these question types in detail with a paragraph of course i'm not going to help you solve the passages because i've already done that in other videos but i'm here my aim is to show you how to approach these questions so we will first begin by looking at matching the list of headings so matching the list of headings has certain unique features which you have to know uh, firstly you will see that the titles are given in the form of roman numbers can you see that uh, the titles are listed in the form of roman numbers so when you are writing the answer as well you need to write the answer in the form of roman numerals only please do not change this this is a very very important uh, thing very important point that needs to be kept in your mind that whenever there is list of headings you have to write the answer in the form of roman numerals only and the second thing is that you will see that the number of titles are more than the number of paragraphs usually so if you look at this example there are eight titles starting from roman number one to roman number eight there are eight titles but there are just five paragraphs so for, for five paragraphs they have given you eight titles with an intention to mislead you so some titles are misleading you need to capture the essence of what the paragraph has to say and match the heading accordingly and the third thing is that sometimes the keywords may be repeated in more than one paragraphs uh, look at these titles the first title contains csr second one also contains csr third also contains csr the fifth one also has csr the seventh one also has csr which means this keyword will be found in more than one paragraphs in the text so if you ask me i would suggest you to not consider this as the main keyword for instance if you look at the first heading how csr may help one business to expand so other than the csr you have business expand and may help so these should be considered as the main keywords and csr of course would be there in the passage so you focus on the overall meaning how is this csr helping to expand your business so expansion of the business is based on csr that is how you need to understand the title so if you take a few minutes of time to analyze the titles like this and then start approaching the uh, paragraphs 
I am sure that it would be much easier and simpler for you. So, if you if at all you want to read those titles and solve this paragraph, you can do so. You can pause the video here itself and you may give a few minutes of time to understand the titles. Then here are the paragraphs guys A, B, C, D and finally E. So, uh, if you want me to help you with these paragraphs, please do let me know. But uh, already I have made videos on them so you can watch that video understand the strategy clearly uh, practically and then you can solve this passage so here I am just briefing you what is the strategy to be followed so there is no correct or incorrect strategy guys whichever strategy works out for you you just go ahead and follow that so first as I told you you need to read all the titles carefully and mark the keywords or the important ones here there is a problem that keyword repetition will be there in the title so try to avoid that and focus on the overall meaning of what the title has to convey then um, is it a recommended approach to read the whole paragraph in detail no i wouldn't suggest that rather you just focus on the first uh, two lines or maybe first line and the last line so after you read the first line go back and compare the titles so, if any of the title is matching, then obviously you need to search for the related keywords in the passage and confirm. If you are not getting any title in the first line, then quickly move to the last line and read it. Maybe sometimes the title could lie in the conclusive sentence as well. If both of these sentences do not convey the essence of the title, then you have to read the entire one, you do, the entire paragraph, you do not have any other option. But if you follow the first sentence and the last sentence approach, definitely you can eliminate the trouble of reading the whole paragraph for each and every one, each and every paragraph. Some paragraphs have to be read, uh, but at least you can save time for the other question types. That's my point. So you're going to read the first sentence and the last sentence. And if the title is not found, then you are going to read the whole paragraph and match the heading with the paragraph. And again, you need to remember that one title would be appropriate for one paragraph so this is the way to approach matching the list of headings now let's quickly move to the second question type under matching which is matching nouns with the information so nouns indicate the name of a person or a place or a thing or an animal uh, or whatever it is so anything that can be named such naming words are called nouns uh, i'm sure you all know this so here you are going to see a list of them and I told you in the beginning of the video that sometimes there is a special instruction called NB which indicates that you may use any letter more than once. In this case letters indicate names, nouns. So you can use any name more than once. Guys uh, this is a clue. If you see NB it means that definitely one of the options will be repeated that is a clue so that uh, by the end of the test if you are unable to and uh, if the end of the question type if you are unable to see that the options are repeated it means that you have made a mistake so it is like an opportunity to correct yourself uh, that they give nb so it is a clue it's a hint so here you can see the names of people uh, tony B tony brown patrick Leahy, bill bowler paul jepson art pims steve black and rick hilton so these are names of people uh, and you have to read these statements that are given and identify the person who spoke about this. Uh, you have to match the person to the information that is given here. But how do you match it? Only by reading the passage. So this is the passage titled as New Agriculture in Oregon, US. So this is the continuation. This is the third part and this is the this is the whole passage which I have uh, you know in, uh, divided so that uh, it will be easier for you to read if at all you want to solve it. So quickly I would like to explain you the strategy which is just a three step process. So there are no complications in the process all you have to do is read all the nouns very carefully uh, and just don't read anything in the passage guys initially just go and circle all the nouns that you see that's it. So that is the second step just go on circling the names then you read the related text you will you will be able to identify the sequence of the names sequence of the nouns this makes it much easier 
for you to grasp the information and identify the noun and match it properly to the statement. So that is it guys. Uh, this is the strategy read all the nouns and identify the nouns in the passage and then read and match the related text. Now quickly we shall move on to the third matching question type that is matching the paragraph. Uh, this is seen to be a confusing uh, question type to many students but let me tell you that there is nothing as such like that. So uh, it's very very simple and easy to match the paragraph all that you need to do is do not focus entirely on the keywords note that the overall meaning is very important because you you will not find the words as it is in the passage you will see that the keywords are given in the form of their synonyms so the better you are aware of synonyms the easier it becomes to identify the paragraph and here sometimes you will notice that nb will be given in the instructions which means that the same paragraph will contain two or three statements. So all you have to do is first start by reading all the statements. So here are the statements. So you are going to read all of them and then you are going to un understand what they mean then read the passage and get the answer. So the strategy is a three step process again read all the statements. So now the uh, mistake that is committed by most of the students is that they will read the first statement and read all the paragraphs and then confirm. Then again they will read the second one and read all the passages. Do not you think that it is uh, a waste of time? Instead of this, so what we would do is we would read all the questions, all the statements initially, mark the keywords, try to understand the point what is conveyed through the uh, statement and then start reading the paragraphs. So you can pause the video here if you wish to solve this. There are four statements and these are the paragraphs. A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So you are given 7 paragraphs A to G and the number of questions that we have here are just 4. So you need to be very careful and follow the strategy as we discussed here so that it will be very very easy to attempt these questions. So finally the last and final matching question type is matching sentence endings. So you will see that uh, so there are several statements which are divided into two parts which you have to reunite by look by reading the paragraph uh, which is contain which contains the information. So basically the first half of the statement is listed here and you need to match the second half and write the alphabet which corresponds to the uh, second half of the passage that is what is meant by matching sentence endings. So this. Uh, indicates uh, whenever you see such question type it is very very easy to answer it again it's just a three step process read the beginning of the sentence mark the keywords read the text related to it and then match the ending you need not worry about reading all the options all the endings initially first read the beginning mark the keywords go back to the text so this is the passage in which the answers are contained just mark the keywords and then read the text you will get the answer very easily so that is all uh, guys. So these are the four matching question types that you see in the ILTS reading test and remember the question types are absolutely the same whether you are going for the general training test or the academic test. You need to be aware of how to approach them and then it is made much simpler to answer them. So I am sure that uh, this video was useful. If yes, please give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends and Consider subscribing to our channel World of English Exams because we release many more useful videos that will help you in your ILTS preparation. So thank you so much for watching the video till the end and please uh, comment and let us know how you like this video and if you have any suggestions or feedback related to any of our videos please feel free to leave us a message and if, if you have any doubts related to any a part of the ILTS test you may feel free to comment and let us know so that we will revert to you at the earliest with the answer. Thank you so much for staying tuned uh, and being one of our lovely subscribers and we hope that uh, you continue doing the same and thank you for encouraging us and happy preparation guys.